Um, so today we're going to get into how to do web development. Now, I want to draw a quick distinction before we get into stuff. Uh, what's the difference between web design and web development? Uh, and basically, web design is more graphic design. It means you work with Photoshop, you make the look and the feel of the web page, and then you give it to a developer. They're going to take your look and feel, and they're going to make the actual web page for you. Um, the designers don't tend to get paid as much. Uh, they don't tend to uh, have as much opportunity to work remotely. I used to be a designer and I moved on to development because it was just a better career to get into. Uh, so that's kind of the difference. Also, it's cheaper to be a web developer. You don't have to buy a thousand dollars worth of Adobe Photoshop software. Uh, all you need is Notepad. That's right, Notepad. Um, except for you'll probably want to get something better than Notepad. We are going to be using Sublime Text. Um, which is one of the best notepad kind of editors out there and it's free so go ahead go download sublime text pause the video come back when you got it fired up and we're going to build a web page so what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a new file in sublime text and saving it as index.html as you see here um, we're basically you can call it whatever you want but the fact that we're calling it .html means that when we open it up in chrome it's going to know that it's a web page so it's going to show it as an html web page um, and today we're going to be learning HTML. Uh, later we're going to be learning CSS, which is another skill you need to learn to be a web developer. Um, and then later on you're going to learn JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is what, uh, HTML is what puts the content together for your page. Uh, but it's going to be ugly because it's just content. CSS is what puts together your style. It stands for cascading, cascading style sheets. So basically it gives look, feel, and style to your web page. Uh, uh, but we're not going to cover that today, so what we're going to make today is ugly. Be prepared. We're going to get into style later. And then JavaScript is function. It makes the web page do cool things. Uh, load in data real time, just like Pinterest does and like Instagram. It makes things move around and animate. JavaScript is where things get fun. Uh, it's also where uh, you get paid better. If you learn HTML, CSS, uh, you know, you, you get paid fine, you get paid normal, but if you get really good at JavaScript, people are really looking for people who are good at JavaScript. You can get paid quite a bit, and it's a lot easier to get remote work uh, or very flexible work. So with no further ado, we let's get into making an HTML page. So you've saved your index.html. Now go to Chrome and open, file open, your index.html file where you saved it. Um, mine shows localhost because I'm using live reload. Basically, whatever I type, it's automatically going to refresh over here for me automatically. For you, you're going to have to hit save. You're going to have to come over to Chrome. You're going to have to hit refresh. Uh, but I, for the sake of this video, I'm doing it differently. So let's build an HTML page. Uh, the core of HTML is tags. Basically, that's all there is to HTML is tags. A tag is basically something surrounded by greater than and less than kind of quotes. And so this is an HTML tag, and this is a closing HTML tag. Pardon me if you can hear my baby crying somewhere way in the background. Um, I'm not sure what's going on out there, but I'm sure mom will take care of it. Um, <laughs> said like a good dad, right? So here we have HTML opening tag, HTML closing tag. Uh, tags are a little awkward to type at first because they use those keys down towards the bottom right that you don't use very often, but I promise you'll get fast very quickly. So basically anything in between these HTML tags is considered within the HTML tags. Um, there's basically three tags that you're going to use to create a web page. There's an HTML, which means, hey, this is my HTML page. Anything inside of this is considered your web page. Um, you're going to make a head tag which we'll get into in a little bit, and you're going to make a body tag. Whatever's in the body tag is what your user will see and interact with. So I'm going to put in here, hello world. And now I have a web page. Congratulations, you're a web developer. And you're probably thinking, wow, this is kind of complicated. It's all this code looking stuff. Don't worry, it looks like a foreign language at first, but seriously, within five times you're gonna feel very comfortable there's only like 10 tags maybe 20 at the most you're gonna use and they're all tags you just have to remember a different word so far all we've actually done is created three tags we made an HTML tag we put a head tag with inside of it and we put a body tag with inside of it as well and these are considered siblings they're next to each other 
I'm also going to add a title tag. And inside of the title, I'm going to put my web page. Man, I can't type today. My web page. And now you look at the top when you refresh, it says my web page at the top of your web page or your tab. So once again, the head is not what the user interacts with. This is all reserved for other stuff, um, which is why the title goes up there. And so the body is what the user interacts with. And we did hello world and the rest of our example will be adding other tags in here. So let me show you kind of some other tags. This is bold. So we're going to wrap bold, or it's called wrapping it, in B tags. And now you can see that bold is bold, because I wrapped it in B, which stands for bold. EM is what we're going to use for italic. And uh, EM basically stands for emphasis. It used to be people would use I. It also works, but that is not the correct way to do it anymore. Um, do not show a prospective employer that, because it's not good. So B is for bold. EM is for italic. And then... Um, Let's see, actually strong, I can't believe I did this. Strong is what we're going to use for bold. We used to use B, and we used to use I, and we used to use U for underline, but now we use strong for bold, and we use EM for italics. And we started doing this when we started getting into mobile devices, and devices that might not actually have the capability of rendering bold or italics, and so we needed some other way to let the user know, or maybe it's a screen reader, uh, that you should display it in whatever way you can. So, but for the most part, strong is always bold. EM is always italic. That's about all you need to know. So we've covered bold and italic. Now let's get into a critical tag, the A tag. That makes a hyperlink to another web page when you click on it. So we're going to make A, Google.com, and guess what? It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, that's because it doesn't know where to go. Uh, one thing that some tags need is what's called attributes. We've defined an A tag, but this A tag doesn't know enough about itself to know where to go. We know what's inside of it, google.com text, but we need to know where to go, so we're going to add an href attribute. You add an attribute by doing equals and then a pair of quotes. And whatever's inside of the quotes is setting the href. So. Google.com. There you go. And look, magically now I'm underlined and I have that purple color because I've been to Google.com before. And look, I can now go back and forth from Google.com to my web page. All like that. You're now a web developer. It's tremendous. So let's do another tag, an IMG for image. And this one needs to know what the source of the image is. I'll leave that blank for now. And that's all an image tag is. For the source... I'm going to go look something up on Google. And let's just look up an image of Simon Cowell. Sure, everybody loves Simon, right? Why not? Let's view image. I'm going to copy the URL. Why won't you let me close? I don't know. Okay. My computer's acting strange. Hit save. And look, there we go. Google.com link and a nice link to Simon Cowell's web, website. Let's see if I can close this. There we go. Um, so basically, that's your core tags. Uh, another thing you'll probably notice is, is these are not coming onto new lines like we've typed them out. At first, that doesn't make sense, and it seems very bad. Uh, but later on, you'll realize it's very, very good. How HTML works is, is it does not recognize anything except for how you program it to go so unless you say it with tags it doesn't know what to do and that's because these things can get huge or sometimes they'll get word wrapping like this and it just doesn't know what to do so it's not going to make any guesses for you if you don't say line break which is a br tag it doesn't line break so there we go i added a br tag and now it's bold whoops i want to add another line break because Right now, Simon Cowell is on the same line as all the other friends. So I'm going to BR. There you go. So now we got, this is bold, line break. This is italic, google.com, line break, and an image. And that's kind of how you start structuring your web page. And you're probably thinking, this is ugly. This doesn't feel like building a web page. 
but this is about as complicated as HTML gets. For real, I'm not making it up. HTML is not much more complicated than this. You just have to remember a few tags, a few attributes like href and source, and that's about it. I can show you a few more tags here. Uh, UL is something you'll use a lot. That stands for unordered list. Um, and inside this, you'll add LIs. Um, so here I've added an LI, which stands for line item, um, item 1, item 2. And now you'll see we've got our, you know, I'm going to get rid of Mr. Simon. Nobody likes to see him for very long anyway. Okay, there we go. So now we've got an unordered list, which by default is just going to display with bullet points, uh, item 1, item 2. Uh, you can style these a lot of different ways, so you're going to use the UL a lot. Anytime you have a list of items, you're going to use a UL with LIs inside of it. Um, a drop-down navigation is a list of items. You'll use UL LI. Um, an actual navigation is a list of items. You'll use UL LI. A list of MP3s in a fake MP3 player online, ULs with LIs. Um, another thing very similar is OLs. And, that's un, and that is ordered list, and that actually by default is going to spit out numbers for each item. You don't really use this one very often, but it's helpful to know that it exists. Uh, we're almost out of tags, honestly, folks. Uh, there's div tags, which you use a lot, uh, but we're not going to show you. That's basically for styling, so we're going to leave it untouched right now. Span tags, you'll also use a decent bit, but once again, that is for styling. So that is about as complicated as HTML gets. All you have to do is get comfortable typing in tags, um, and you're pretty much an HTML developer. Uh, paragraph tags, those are important, and header tags, and then we'll be done. P, P is for paragraph. That's another way to kind of separate text. Let's say we added this four times. It's starting to get all messy. And I forgot to close these. P and each P and a slash P. There we go. So inside of this paragraph, we have this. I don't know what that did right there. Inside of this paragraph, we have a block of text for each one. And you'll see the paragraph automatically kind of created its own space on either side. Paragraphs are usually the way you're going to want to add fresh line breaks. Usually you don't want to use the BR tag um, like we're using there. Uh, but it has its purposes as well. BR creates a line break, as you can see here, and P creates a fresh paragraph with space on either side. The only other tags you're going to use are header tags. They start with H. Depending on how big you want the header to be, you'll use H1 for the biggest. H2 is smaller than that. And H3 and so on down to about H6 or so. It's pretty rare to have headers beyond in six different sizes. You're probably pretty bad at design if you're doing that. And when it refreshes, there you go. Big. Not so big, not really big. And then we're down to our normal text. So that is HTML design. So our next thing, we're going to cover style so you can actually not feel like a fake developer, you get to feel like a real developer in the next one as we start to style our things. CSS gets a little more complicated, so I'd encourage you to take a little time, make some links, make some different web pages, um, and just have fun with HTML for a little while before you move forward. In our next one, we're going to do a little bit more advanced HTML, and we're going to do a little bit more style.